Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello and welcome back to the channel where today we are welcoming an epic car here at the Shmi Museum. We're going to be joined by my friend Passin with his Koenigsegg Agira RS Naraya. Now you might have seen Naraya on the channel in years gone by. In fact, when he took delivery of it, I filmed a video which I think nearly 4 million of you guys have seen to date. Well, he's coming along today, which means it will be the first ever Koenigsegg to be here at the Shmi Museum. The most powerful car that will be here at the moment, but just not quite the most powerful car that's ever been to visit. We're going to be going out for a little run today though in the Koenigsegg, fresh from having been over to the factory only a couple of weeks ago to catch up with Christian and experience the Yesco. Well, the Agira RS really came behind and I think triggered the Yesco's existence. So we're going to be talking all about that today, plus new watch on the wrist. We're going to take a look at that in a moment also. So we welcome today the first Koenigsegg to the Schmuseum. <laughs> Just to put this car in perspective, the Koenigsegg Agera RS, if you have the standard option, has 1,160 horsepower. You could opt then to upgrade it to the one megawatt engine from the one to one, which means you literally have a mega car, one megawatt of power, which is 1,341 brake horsepower, 1,360 horsepower. But even the standard 1160, to consider this for a second, it's almost double that. It's just shy of double the Huracan STO, which is normally considered to be a very powerful supercar. Even in fact, it is more than the most powerful car I own, which is the SF90 Stradale with a thousand horsepower by about as much as two thirds of the latest arrival here, the Elise Cup 250, 160 horsepower more than the SF90. These are big, big, big numbers. Now the Agera RS is one of 25, effectively the final version, you could say, of the Koenigsegg Agera platform, the predecessor to the Yesco, which I was experiencing with Christian von Koenigsegg, well, only a week or two ago, but it's one of 25. It's super rare, super valuable, and it's about to be the first Koenigsegg to come and visit here, which I would say is really quite exciting. Before they arrive though, I'd like to quickly show you what I'm wearing today. The Koenigsegg that's coming to visit today is quite an unusual and out there car. And we've had a few unusual things now that have stopped by the Shmi Museum, including until not all that long ago, a car that I was storing here on behalf of a friend for a few months, a stunning Gunther Works 911, a remastered 911 based on the 993 generation, a car that was beautiful to behold, but also a fabulous experience to drive when I took it out and a very nice segue into what's on my wrist today. This is the new Rec Watches 901 GW Exoskeleton, a collaboration between Rec Watches and Gunther Works that was two years in the making using Rec Watches' unique approach to recover, recycle, and reclaim. To use materials that are left over in the manufacturing of the car, in this case, the car being the very first customer commission of a Gunther Works remastered 911, which actually belongs to a friend of mine out in California. I've actually filmed that very car a few times before, and it's limited to only 188 timepieces because that is all the material that was available from the production process that was left over that could be brought into the watch itself. Now, when you look at the watch, there are numerous design elements that directly link to the car. For example, the bezel that you find here is exactly the same style of design as you have on the headlight surrounds, the instrument cluster for the gauge surrounds, also for the surround of the ignition switch. You even have the X brace in the middle of the dial, exactly as you do on the engine bay cover, the window to the engine on the car itself, and even the color scheme with the blue accents against the black finished with some of the orange details as well. You can actually get 20% off now and as I said there are only 188 of them. If you use the code SHMI20 and I'll pop all of the information down below about the Rec Watches 901GW exoskeleton. This particular example you can also check out the other watches that are available as well but there are some very nice details which link to the cars and I'm always a big fan of that and obviously having the Gunther Works here was very special. Super cool to now be wearing this as well so big thanks to Rec Watches. But for now we're holding holding fire for the arrival of the Koenigsegg so we can check it out. Well, look what we have here. The Agira RS Naraya. Would you look at this? The first Koenigsegg in the Museum has arrived. That just sounds like power in here. <laughs> kind of just parked right in the middle. I think it's allowed. I think it deserves it. Look at this. Exposed carbon, the gold accents all around breathtaking. Let's have a full look around it. <laughs> well, it sounds good too. 
here it is then, the Koenigsegg Agera RS, here at the Sch Museum, one of only 25 of the world's fastest car in terms of speeds driven on a public road, 278 miles per hour on the average speed, 285 miles an hour peak when they did that run out in Nevada with a car with the full one megawatt power upgrade, but still one of 25. I don't know exactly how many right-hand drive cars there are, but not a whole lot. And this particular car has been driven and enjoyed a lot. As I said, we've seen it a few times over the years. We've got the full exposed carbon fiber bodywork in the dark navy. You've got all of these gold accent lines painted all over it to give you the contrast to emphasize and really show you where all the aero parts are. Even the wheels, obviously in full carbon as well saving weight that side of things making sure you get the most out of the car with 1160 horsepower big big numbers the doors kind of like doors always have this amazing mechanism the way they open up and outwards and then inside here we've got the interior to match the exterior with the navy blue alcantara and again the gold accents even the gold stitching and piping on the seats and on the steering wheel a very very special car completely bespoke and personalized you could pop off the roof with the Koenigseggs, you can remove the roof panel from inside, stow it away up front should you wish to drive the car open. If you have one with a snorkel, obviously it can't fit then in the front. And back here, you've got the five litre twin turbocharged V8 Koenigsegg in-house with the triplex suspension that you can see basically through that opening at the back, which is really quite cool to see as well. And obviously the Agera launched, I guess it was back in 2009, 2010, went through the Agera, the Agera R, the Agera S, the RS, the one-to-one, -one, and the final editions, Thor and Vader that I've seen as well out with that Gunther Works that I mentioned out in Danamai's garage with Speedy Jeff in California. So this is a very cool thing, and it just so happens that I have the key to it here. So I think the plan now is a bit of a key swap. Naraya, GT, swap the keys. We're gonna take both cars out, go for a little run. I'm gonna be driving the Agera RS. Let's do this. This is a little bit surreal. I'm driving an Agera RS, although I do have to confess, this is not the first time I've been lucky enough to drive a Koenigsegg Agera RS. It is the first time that I've driven one in the UK though, and the first thing I will say is that it is really, really loud, especially when you get to a bit of a road like this that opens up and you can put your foot down. And just open it up a little bit. And also, not only this, but of course, I'm looking in my rearview mirror at the wing that's active and moving up and down, but also right behind me, my Ford GT being driven in convoy, which is really quite fun as well. I tell you what, when it comes to raw experiences, and obviously just for the first couple of miles, I'm taking this easy and adjusting to it a little bit. It is mad. Listen to this. Just building up the revs and then you got those pops and bangs going off behind you. Gosh, this feels like a serious sense of occasion. And that's something that cars like this do, that even other modern hypercars now don't give you. And that's one of the reasons why I've gone the crazy choice of the Zenbo is because it's quite like this, although this now I don't even begin to use half the power that this has available on a normal public road. You need to be on a runway or a racetrack because even just feathering the pedals, you get a sense for how ballistic this thing is. Gosh, it feels raw, it feels ferocious. Now, on the infotainment screen down here is where you have your settings, so you can put it into performance mode track, which is where things sharpen up. I'm keeping all the traction controls and aids and everything like that very well and truly on for this drive. But... Goodness me, as we head up through the trees here, this little convoy with these cars, I'm actually going to put it back into normal. Looks a little bit greasy around here. Must to everybody else seem utterly absurd. I mean, it's absurd for us. Gosh. <laughs> I can't believe I'm driving this right now here. This is like out of this world. Literally, literally madness. Gosh, it feels proper heavy steering, but connected steering as it should be. Let's hope it's going to open up ahead 
can have a bit more fun as we get further on the roads because this needs to be enjoyed. I'm not going to lie, as well as being very noisy, it is also very, very far in here. The suspension is completely set up for a car with this much power as you probably expect, which means down some fairly small, tight, twisty English country lanes like this, it's definitely not best suited. Now, I'm following a car ahead 45, 50 miles an hour or so, so we're not getting to go full guns blazing. We'll find a dual carriageway up ahead to open it up a little bit more, but this is all about the emotional feeling, about the sound, about the drama, about the sense of occasion. And my word, does it do all of those to the absolute max? Concentration levels are in overload driving this. Absolutely thinking about everything that's going on and what the car's about. In fact, I'm going to slow it down to first gear for a moment. Goodness me. The sounds, the feeling of this. It is bonkers. It is absolutely stark raving bonkers. I, I, this car, I mean, I hope other owners of these drive them as much as Passen does with this, because honestly, it's a fun that needs to be experienced. And to have done a fair few thousand miles now in this is a good effort by him, to be honest, because it's intense. Never has 50 miles per hour felt so crazy. That was literally only an acceleration to 50 miles per hour. Madness, madness, madness defined. I mean, wow, really, really special. How cool is this then? <laughs> to see the GT out ahead of us. I love that thing on the road. It looks so epic as we make our way through town. Pop, pop, bang, bang. Heading out towards some more open stuff. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I feel like if I put the windows down, it's not going to get any louder in here because even with a tunnel. Wow. Just absolutely wow. I mean, if I hover here, we might get the GT coming back beside us. I'm just looking at it coming past like, yes. <laughs> oh, amazing. This is the fun bit, all the way down through the gears. The rawness is out of this world. My word. This is bonkers. This is absolutely bonkers. And now the sun's poking through. What a beautiful time to drive this thing. Look at this. <laughs> oh, the wing! And it bleeps the old brother flashes the brake lights under braking. I have kind of forgotten that. Tell you what, though, we cannot hear the Ford GT at all over this. Like, it's like there's nothing there. It just looks amazing. It looks absolutely amazing. supercar 
is that feeling you have, forget the speed, because on the public road you can't use it anyway, but that feeling of occasion, that feeling of excitement driving it, that comes from the sounds, the bespoke nature of the build and materials and design, and experience with the manufacturer, and then this a bit. What can I say? What can I say? It's ridiculous. This is totally, totally, totally wacky. What? I don't, yeah, no more words. You can't ever complain about taking a car like this through a tunnel. Now, I'm going to pop the window down a touch, but I don't think it's going to make any difference. GT alongside. Wow! I think that just set off a fireball and a half. We're parked back up inside and I tell you what, that car is so loud compared to the Ford GT. The Ford GT is a pretty quiet supercar as these things go. It's got the new European exhaust, so it's much quieter than it was when it had the US exhaust. That, however, is just noise. You constantly have this overwhelming sensation of the power, of the noise, of the drama, of the madness of the car. Obviously, it's quite an unusual shape because you have a very square footprint to the Koenigsegg's very squared front end. So you're conscious of how wide those front corners are. And especially on the country lanes, obviously very conscious of the size of the car. It is about the same between these two, but that as an experience was really, really crazy. So the first Koenigsegg has been to visit the Museum and we've been out for a drive as well. Huge thanks for that experience in Naraya. Mine needs a few minutes just to catch up on it. <laughs> That sounds so beastly. It's time to say farewell though. The Agira RS Naraya is rolling on out. Look at the way the carbon is done. The blue with the regular black carbon stripe just differentiating it slightly. Same for the wing. Spoiler. Just amazing. What an awesome day experiencing that. It's rollout time. What an amazing day, taking the two cars out for a drive, but don't forget to check out the Rec Watchers 901GW Exoskeleton, where you can get 20% off using the code SHME20 on the watches from the 901GW range. And if you like watches, check out also my new channel, Schwatch150, where I'm sharing with you some of the watches from my collection, and we'll take a better look at this timepiece as well. For now though, that is all. Thank you very much to Passin for coming down with the Agira RS, for letting me take it for a drive. I think you enjoy getting behind the wheel of the Ford GT as well. And thank you very much to Rec Watches for supporting this video and to you guys as always for your support. It's hugely appreciated. That's it for now though. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.